Hello everyone, today we're going to be annotating War Photographer by Carol Ann Duffy. So by the end of this video I'm hoping that you um, are learning to understand and analyse the key ideas in the poem. If you can explain what happens in the poem, if you can break down and examine the language of the poem then you'll have been successful. And I am looking for you to create an annotated copy of the poem. And if you can generate an annotated copy of the poem you'll have also been successful with that. Make sure you revisit these um, learning intentions and success criteria at the end of this video and double check that you've managed to be successful in all of them and, and if you've got any questions, bring them back to class. Thank you. Okay, we're going to start with some context. Um, what I would suggest is that you, you copy this down onto the back of your A3 sheet um, and you can revisit it. Don't feel like you have to copy it word for word. If you want to shorten it, put it into your own words, then that's absolutely fine too. So this poem addresses a peculiar change faced by a war photographer whose job it is, uh, who, whose job requires him to record terrible horrific events without being able to help them directly. Um, Duffy was inspired to write this poem by her friendship with a war photographer and she was really intrigued by the particular challenge faced by these people whose job required them to record terrible horrific events without being able to direct their, uh, directly help their subjects. That's something that um, I'm sure would be something that could massively affect you as an individual. We view this issue from the perspective of the photographer um, and she, through this she manages to reveal the difficulties of such an occupation. By the end of the poem it's clear her subject straddles two vastly different worlds yet increasingly feels he belongs to neither. So just some points to note and again if I were you I would write this down beside my context on the back of my A3 sheet. The poem is laid out in four regular six line stanzas with each stanza ending in a rhyming couplet. The structure is interesting since it's very rigid. Um, it's very rigid order contrasts with that chaotic disturbing image described in the poem. Um, the organisation mirrors the action of the photographer who lays out his films in ordered rows, as though he's, in doing so he can in some way help to restore the order to this chaotic world. It moves through a series of observations in the first three stanzas to, to, to a conclusion of sorts in the fourth. Um, the themes explored here are the horrors of war, the conflict people feel inside and an increasing indifference to the victims of conflict. I've included a key for you. Um, I'm going to do word choice in black, I'm going to do imagery in red, and I'm going to do sentence structure in blue, just like we do in class. Um, you can either highlight or you can use coloured pens or you can make up your own key. That's entirely up to you. What I would do if I were you is after each stanza, and uh, I would listen, first of all, I would listen to the stanza and the annotations, mm. check it, understand it, and then I would pause it at that slide and copy in the annotations onto my own copy. Again, remember, it's okay to shorten things, but don't change it too much so that the, uh, you, you really don't want the, the meaning of it to change. In his dark room, he is finally alone, with spools of suffering set out in order rows. The only light is red and softly glows, as though this were a church, and he, a priest preparing to intone a mass. Belfast, Beirut. Phnom Penh, all flesh is grass. Okay, I'm going to start with the first line. Um, in his dark room, he is finally alone, and we're going to consider the word choice of dark room here. Um, it really creates a tranquil setting, which contrasts with the sights and sounds of warfare that our photographer would have been used to. Um, we go to finally, which suggests he's relieved to be home after his experiences. It really shows us his longing to isolate himself and gives us an insight into his character from the beginning. Obviously, what he's witnessed at war has caused him suffering and caused him anguish to the point where he wants to shut himself away and isolate himself. We go on to that next line and we're, we're faced with an image of, of spools of suffering set out in ordered rows. Um, it, it suggests that he's trying to create order out of that chaotic and pain-filled world that he works in. The camera spools are ordinarily filled with occasions of happiness, but in this instance these war photo photographs show the grim reality of war. Um, that contrast is really, really hard hitting. And you could also look at the alliteration of that if you wanted to discuss the word choice. Um, it creates this calm atmosphere, which again contrasts with that idea of suffering. Um, we go on to the, the third line and we, we have um, the image of red. Again, you could talk about the word choice of that if you wanted as well. But it really is symbolic of the blood lost at war. But it, it, red, it, the red is the colour that, um, that, that you would see in that dark room as well. It's quite a sinister colour. We move on and I continue on to another image here. As though this were a church and he a priest preparing to intone a mass. 
And we really get that idea that he's comparing himself to a priest. Um, he really sees the importance of his work through this. And also continues the idea of death, which is is kind of ever present in our poem. Um, if I could look a wee bit further back, go back to that second line, and we talk about the idea of death again, the order draws, which is our, our, our word choice here, um, and it introduces the idea of death as the spools are laid out in the same way that the coffins would be. Finally, if we could look at the, the last line, the bit in blue, where we have the, the list of the places that he has recorded conflict, gives us a real sense of reality here and really demonstrates the places that, that the photographer has been to. So we move on to the second stanza. He has a job to do. Solutions slop in trays beneath his hands which did not tremble then though seem to now. Rural England, home again, to ordinary pain which simple weather can dispel, to fields which don't explode beneath the feet of running children in a nightmare heat. So let's look at that first line, he has a job to do. The short sentence really reinforces how seriously he takes his job. And if we think back to that previous stanza where the war photographer compares his job to, to that of a priest, um, you really are getting to see how important he finds this and how important it is to share the images of war to, to the people back at home. Solution slop and trays is the next part. And this, the alliteration of solution slop really creates that contrast with stanza one. We had the, the calming alliteration and the calm, calculated manner in which he laid out his, his spools, but solution slop and trays would suggest that perhaps that's not the case anymore. Um, and if we move on to that second line, we see the word tremble, which has connotations of fear and suffering. He, he's alone in his dark room. He doesn't need to distance himself from that pain and suffering anymore. And that's been the reality of what he witnessed begins to set in. We really feel sorry for the character here as he deals with his emotions and he struggles to really contain them. But he is also trying to, um, trying to show us what the horrors of, of war have been. If we look again, um, again looking at, at the structure of rural England, uh, that that short sentence really contrasts with the word, the, the war zones that we're we're faced with at the end of stanza one. Um, rural England it seems like a quite a nice place to be, whereas when you look at Beirut and the different other places that we were told about, the contrast is massive. Ordinary pain, which simple weather can dispel, is the next part I want to look at. Uh, in terms of the word choice of ordinary pain, um, the, the wars really made everyday life seem meaningless and trivial in comparison to the suffering experienced by others. And although that seems like quite a, an oxymoron, the idea of ordinary pain, all it's there to do is to kind of show you just how difficult the lives were of the people who, um, who, who had to face the war and who are part of these war zones. Um, you can, you can look at the last two lines of the, the fields which don't explode beneath the feet of running children in a nightmare heat. Um, again, you've got that rhyming couplet at the end and feet and heat and it ties it off quite nicely. And um, that's, that's in reference to a, a really famous picture that was taken by a war photographer where um, there, there were children running away from, from, from a, a, an attack. Um, it, it's something that you can write down if you want. It's not necessary, but it's just quite an interesting bit of background to that. Something is happening. A stranger's features faintly start to twist before his eyes. A half-formed ghost. He remembers the cries of this man's wife, how he sought approval without words to do, what someone must, and how the blood stained into foreign dust. So mirroring again that previous stanza, we have a short sentence. Something is happening. This short sentence really injects drama and suspense into the, the narrative and also suggests a real lack of control we start to see this horrific photograph unfold in front of our eyes and, and we are seeing that through the eyes of, of the war photographer. Um, we go down to this idea of twist here into the second line and we, we are reminded the connotations are pain and distortion um, and, and we, we start to feel real sympathy for, for the photographer and his experiences but also through the victim for the victims of war. We move on to the, the, the third line here, and there's another really interesting image and a half-formed ghost. It has it has sort of two meanings here, um, and it, it's really effective as a result. 
It describes the way the figures gradually appearing on the paper. So you see the white shadows as it starts to develop. You can't quite understand what it's going to look like. But it also alludes to the fact that he no longer exists and he's effectively become a ghost. Death is ever present in this poem and it, and it comes back through each stanza. Um, the, next few, the next few lines are all highlighted in bold black, which again is to show you the, the, um, the word choice, the importance of word choice here. Um, it cries. It, it's really important for word choice. Again, that pain and suffering. And we go down to the idea, um, I'll just read that bit to you actually. He remembers the cries of this man's wife, how he sought approval without words to do what someone must. It really recalls the awful reaction of the wife through those cries and must. It really, really shows us his sense of duty that he has to record this. Again, back to this idea of a priest, it, his job's a vocation, it's a calling rather than just a career. He feels like he has to do this. We look at the blood stained into foreign dust, um, and stained means to leave the mark, to damage and to destroy, which is, is what it's done to, to, the, um, to, to the lives of the people who, who have been victims of war, but also the damage that it has done to the, the, the psyche and the, the personality and the mind of, of the war photographer. Um, dust is literally the, the dark. Um, and grit, however, also really has religious connotations coming back through there as well. A hundred agonies in black and white, from which his editor will pick out five or six for Sunday supplement. The reader's eyeballs prick with tears between the bath and pre-lunch beers. From the aeroplane he stares impassively at where he earns his living, and they do not care. So we're going to start with a hundred agonies. This idea, a um, hundred agonies contrasted with that idea of picking out five or six, it shows a really careless indifference in the way that the editor selects the indifference, the, sorry, the images, which reinforces how little regard we have for the subjects in the pictures. Um, hundreds of people, hundreds of stories, whereas only five or six are going to be going to be shown. It's very unfair. Um, looking at agonies in black and white agonies suggesting again the extreme pain that, that's been that's been suggested earlier black and white is a wee bit different often it can be used to mean fact something understandable or clear and um, it shows his job really is about collecting facts but also shows us how depressing it is reducing people to these facts and um, this doesn't show their personalities it doesn't show their lives it only shows the the, the black and white reality of of warfare um we move on down to the reader's eyeballs prick with tears beneath the bath, between the baths and pre-lunch beers, um, and that's that's a, a funny little technique called syndicate. Um, a syndicate is where you you put a certain emotion onto one part of your body, and in this idea, in this sense, it's, it's onto the the eyeballs pricking with tears. It's, it's a type of of it's a type of technique used by um, writers all the time. This, in this occasion, it's used to highlight how little they react to the horror they see, um, how, how little they feel. It's only their eyeballs that, that are pricking with slight tears. It's not their heart, not their mind. They're, they're, not, they're not moved to do anything to make changes beneath their or between their, their, their daily pursuits, which is very sad and also making, makes the reader quite angry. Um, we have this last, um, again, this last rhyming couplet, the last two lines. From the aeroplane, he stares impassively at where he earns his living and they do not care. It ends with the photographer departing once more for a new job and he is accepting his photos are making no real difference. And that's very clear from they do not care. It's a really sad poem and it, it, this it shows us the cycle of war and, and really lets us into the, the psyche of, the, of that um, of that speaker and the character that, that Duffy manages to create through that. She really shows a really deep understanding of that character and, and manages to, to bring an emotion out in the reader. Um, thanks for listening today, guys. Please make sure that if you have any questions or feedback on this, that you could bring them to class for your homework. Um, and make sure that you bring your annotated copy because it will be marked as a homework piece. Thanks.